My fellow warriors, we must now embark on our treacherous journey to face and defeat the demon god. But before that, we must solve the mystery as to who went dookie in the urinal. guy here with the final anime review for November and that's on the anime Roka Braves of the Six Flowers. Now Roka follows a group of warriors who were chosen by the goddess of fate to become the Braves of the Six Flowers. An elite team tasked with fighting and defeating the demon god when he reawakes. But upon heading to the land of demons to face said demon god, they discover that there's actually seven Braves not six, and according to their established lore, there can only be six braves, no more and no less. So they come up with the conclusion that one of them is a fake brave working with the demon god in order to stop them from completing their mission, all the while also being trapped in a foggy forest that was set up as a trap by this false brave. And so now, my dear viewer, they must Sherlock Holmes their way out of this dilemma by solving the mystery of which one of them is the seventh and false brave in order to escape this foggy forest trap. <laughs> now last month, after reviewing Rambo Keaton, a lot of you put in the comment section that if I wanted to see a good mystery anime, I should check out Roka, Braves of the Sixth Flower, and needless to say, that really piqued my curiosity. And so. I added this anime to my November anime poll. You all voted for it to be one of the animes I reviewed in November, and after watching this entire anime, all I have to say is, this anime is quite solid. It has solid animation with good character designs, solid action sequences that were very enjoyable and did a really good job at displaying the skills of each of the Braves, and solid voice acting from the entire cast. But where this anime truly shines, is in its unique concept and deep story. This is such a great concept and a great use of genre mixing. Putting a mystery story in a fantasy setting with a touch of romance thrown into it is just a match made in heaven and a unique take on the whole fantasy genre. And the story is interesting and compelling, both the mystery and fantasy parts, with many great reveals throughout. And I really just want to learn more about this world. I feel like it has so much to tell with some rich history behind it. And it also pulls that whole devil is a part-timer thing where things are not what they seem. Meaning, there's more to this world than we are led to believe. And I can't help but be fascinated by that potential. And finally, the characters, particularly the seven braves that we follow throughout the entire anime. All of them are just as fascinating and rich as the story itself, with all seven members having their own unique personalities. First we got Adlet, the self-proclaimed strongest man in the world, but the unique thing about him is that he actually lives up to that title. I mean, this character is so smart and quick on his feet and really strong, both mentally and physically. And he has such a well-fleshed out backstory and makes for a really strong leader character. Next is Flamey, who in my opinion is the most dynamic and well-developed character in this entire anime. She's cold, distant, and mysterious. You don't know much of this character, which makes you want to just learn more about her, not to mention the fact that she is very untrusting of other people. She likes to keep to herself, and this is tied into her very well-explored backstory. And I love seeing how much this character grows throughout this entire series, starting off as the girl that doesn't really like to trust in people, to a girl that is willing to open up a little bit more and put her faith in others once again. Not to mention, just like Otlet, the moment I saw this character, I was smitten. She is freaking Gorgeous, especially with that flower in her hair. My god, I fell in love with her. And speaking of those two, absolutely adored their relationship. It had great development that created a strong 
convincing bond between them. I felt genuine chemistry and I wanted to see them grow closer and closer to each other as the series went on. Not to mention that their relationship defied so many romance conventions, which I actually really liked. It's not your typical soon today or dawn today or coup today type relationship where the girl won't admit that she's in love with the guy. No. It's much more deeper and complex than that. There are much more barriers to deal with in this relationship for it to work. And then you got the other Braves, who are also solid in this anime. You got Nastanya, the ditzy princess who's enamored with Adlet. Goldov, the loyal knight who's in love with the princess. You got Chamu, the arrogant, impatient little kid with a really cool power set. Mara, the serious, stern, intellectual warrior woman. And finally, and my personal favorite, Hans, the cunning and swift assassin. But alas, dear viewer, <laughs> though there are many good elements to this anime, it does have its fair share of issues. One of the biggest issues with this anime, at least for me, was that the mystery was way too easy to solve. By the second episode, I knew who the seventh and fake Brave was. They made it way too obvious as the character just didn't make sense as a character, at least to me. The signs were all over the place. Now a good mystery is one that makes you second guess yourself. Like throughout the entire anime you could think it's this character, but now you're starting to think maybe it's this other character or maybe it's this character now. Throughout the entire anime I never second guessed myself. I knew it was gonna be this character, all the time and by the end of the anime, I was correct. I just hate it when an anime that spends most of its episodes trying to solve a mystery has a mystery that is so damn obvious. I don't know whether or not it was obvious for you guys, but for me, it was painfully obvious. As I said, the character just didn't make sense as a character. Their behavior was way too suspicious from the get-go to the point where I'm like, that's who it is. That's the seventh. And speaking of said mystery, because they made it so blatantly obvious who the seventh brave was, it made it feel like the mystery stretched on for way too long. It did not need to be eight episodes, a majority of the anime, especially when there's so many other interesting facets that the anime could have explored. They could have condensed it into like four episodes where the characters are slowly trying to figure it out and then they come to the conclusion and then we can move on. It took away from some much needed development on the other Braves, their backstories, and exploration of the world and story of Roka, Braves of the Six Flowers. Now normally I wouldn't mention or do this after doing an anime review, but I just found this world, its story, and its characters so damn fascinating that I had to learn more. So I did a little research on the anime and the light novel that it was based on, and what I discovered was so damn interesting and it just broke my heart that they did not include it in the anime. They shine so much light on the story, some of the backstories of the Braves, like you learn why Goldoof is so in love with the princess. It's never explored in the anime and he comes off as the weakest brave member because of that. You learn a little bit more about Chamu, you learn more about Mara. A lot of the characters get much more interesting and developed backstories that were never explored in this anime. And considering that it's because they spent so much time on this lackluster mystery, I can't help but fault the anime for that. But also you could fault the length. I mean 12 episodes is just not enough for such an expansive story. And once again tying into my previous issue, the last issue with this anime is obviously its ending. It is very underwhelming and leaves you completely unsatisfied with so many questions unanswered, introducing a new character in the last episode that makes you scratch your head going Huh? I mean, come on. You're introducing a new character at the end of this anime. Not to mention, because of this new character, we are now resorting to typical romantic comedy tropes into this anime. After the great development that this romance had, we're going to resort to some cliches? That is really disappointing. But, <laughs> overall, while this anime did have many issues with it and a lackluster mystery, I still found myself enjoying this anime. 
The story was still involving, the characters were still interesting, and though the mystery was easy to solve, I was still going along for the ride. I wanted to see how it would all unfold. The anime has so much potential to grow and could still get a second season to explore all the elements and answer my questions. So for that, I'm going to give this anime a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's still an enjoyable anime. But anyway, my dear viewers, what did you guys think of this anime? Did you really like it? Did you enjoy it? Did you thought the mystery was really well handled? Or did you find it really boring and dull and you felt the mystery was way too easy and you couldn't get into it? And let me know what is a mystery you've seen in an anime, movie, or TV show that was way too obvious to solve. Comment below, let me know, and stay tuned next Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the beginning of BCG Disney Week. All the videos have been completed, so all you have to do is wait until Sunday comes around and you'll be bombarded with video upon video of Disney goodness. I cannot wait. Super excited. And until then, guys, if you would like to see more videos on this channel and be a part of the Black Critter Crew, please hit that subscribe button below, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'll tell you what in a second. The Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube. Oh, 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 o